Hi everybody. Welcome back to our beginner painting class. This week we're going to do a patriotic project. I did it on just a box. It's a box that looks like a book. It opens. It has a drawer. This is a piece that you can adapt to any surface. So you can do it on a square surface, you can do it on a canvas, you can do it on anything you have around. You can do it on watercolor paper and then frame it. So it's a great adaptable piece. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that there. So when I started this piece, I used Decoarts, we're going to paint in Decoart acrylic. I use Decoart light buttermilk. For the light buttermilk, I just squeezed a little out. I used a big three quarter brush. And I'll show you on this side so we can keep going. And I use a lot of paint. Okay. I pull my base coat. See how nice and thin that is? I do that because it dries the way I put it on. Now, you can have, it can be transparent, which means see-through. You don't want to do this and blob it on. You see those lumps? If you have those lumps there, they're going to dry that way, and you don't want that. So always pull your base coat smooth. When it's dry, then you'll come in and you'll put another coat on. So the way to tell if it's dry, let's see if you can see that. This is a glare. See that glare? That shine means that it's not dry yet. So if you look where I've already done, there's no shine. So it's dry, okay? Just wait till it dries, and then, I'm just gonna put this here because this is wet, and then you're just gonna put it down, okay? So, now I take my line drawing, and I would put it on my surface, whatever your surface may be. You use graphite. Now, graphite looks like carbon paper. It's got a flat side and it's got a shiny side. It works the same as carbon paper, but what happens with carbon paper is number one, you can't erase it. And number two, when you touch, it's everywhere. So you don't want that. It works with pressure. So I'm going to lay my pattern where I want it. I'm just going to hold the corner and I'm going to slip the graphite in, shiny side down. Okay? And I'm just going to slide it in. And I'm going to hold it. If you're more comfortable, tape your pattern down. I don't. Now on this piece, we want to have pretty straight lines. So graphite paper works with pressure. So I'm going to use a stylus, which is a tool that has a metal rounded edge. They come in different size points. So here's, oh no, doesn't want to show you, huh? There's one side and there's a smaller side. You can use a pencil, you can use the back of a paintbrush, anything that'll give it pressure. I'm using a ruler because I want the straight lines. Now, I am not going to transfer the details of my firecracker right now because when I base coat my stripes, what's going to happen is I'm going to base over it and I'm not even going to see them. So I'm just going to come in. And I'm just going to base coat. 
I'm just going to transfer my lines. Okay. Now, if you want to make sure that you did it correctly, just lift and you can see those lines. And then you know there's your pattern. You'll just put your pattern and your graphite aside. Now, graphite is a wonderful thing because it's erasable. So, here, when I did my transfer, I got some on the background where I don't want it. So I'll just take an eraser and I'll just erase. The good thing is that you can paint, and as long as there's not paint on top of it, what will happen is it will erase right off. Now, I wanted pretty straight lines. So, what I did is I taped off my red stripes. Well, yeah, let's tape off the field first. This, the blue part of the flag, is called the field. So, I'll tape that off. Now, I'm taping outside the field. Okay push it down. Now the trick, this is a good trick, the trick to not getting bleeding paint underneath your lines is to take your base coat color, your big brush, and seal the edges. So I'm just going right where the tape is. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna seal that area so that the paint doesn't bleed underneath it. Make sure it's dry. I'm just gonna take a little fan so we can get this done pretty quickly. Now, fans are great for this. You can use a fan, you can use a blow dryer, you can use, you can wait for it to dry. And it doesn't take long. I just don't want you to have to sit here while I do that. All right, so now I'm gonna take navy blue. I'm gonna put out a little puddle. And I don't have to put out a lot. I have probably a quarter size, okay? So I'm gonna pick it up on my big brush again. And remember what I said, smooth. I'm gonna come in and it'll be nice and smooth. Now, you'll see, doesn't matter if you go left or right, just matters that you're smooth. Now, you see how that's pretty opaque? Stuck to the paper. See how that's pretty opaque? That's okay, because as soon as it's dry, you'll just come in, and I'll just show you how the second coat works, and you'll add a second coat. Can you see how fast that dried? Now you can use, go to the dollar store and get a fan. It doesn't have to be any fancy fan or anything else and the second coat I'm being a little messy you'd be a little neater and the second coat is a nice now sometimes you need three coats I would do another coat on this and it immediately I know the paint is wet but you always want to lift your paint, your tape as soon as you can. Because what happens is if you let it dry, the paint sticks to it and then you pull the paint. Okay. So you see how nothing bled under? I have perfect lines. You see that? Okay. So now, I'm going to take my tape again, and I'm going to tape off my red stripes. Mm. 
Let me just draw it right here. Now keep in mind, because this is important, you have to think about where you don't want to be. So when I tape off my red lines, I also don't want to be on my field. So I'm going to tape right where I painted. Again, make sure it's dry. So that I don't get on that area. Okay, I'm not sticking too well because I'm not really dry. The first stripe is red. So I don't want to put tape where my red is going to be. My second stripe is white. So I'm going to tape there. Come on. Now, this stripe is going to be white. Okay, so we're red, white, red, white. But I also want to tape the bottom of the field. So I'm going to pull the tape all the way across. Push it down. That's going to be my red stripe. This is going to be my white stripe. White stripe. I must have done something wrong. Red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, and red. Now I use tape. My tape is, I think it's three quarters. And that's what I'm going to make my stripes. I'm just going to make my stripes three quarters. If I wanted them wider, I would tape the top of the stripe, oh, my hand's probably in the way, the top of the stripe and the bottom of the stripe. So that would give me a wider stripe, okay? But I just found it easier for this piece that it was a good size. Again, the trick to perfect stripes is come in with your base coat color and just Okay. Now, just to give you an idea, again, seal, base coat color. I'm not going to do this one so that I can show you. We'll see if it bleeds under so you can see. Here, I didn't use light buttermilk, I used navy. So when I seal, I want to seal, but I don't want to do a lot, okay? I just want to do where the stripe is, because it'll take me more time to do it in red. Okay, so if it bleeds under, it's gonna bleed in the navy, so you won't see that. Now remember, this one I didn't see on. Now sometimes it doesn't bleed, so we're gonna see if it does. Now, when you're painting um, red over white, make sure that your light color is dry because otherwise you'll get pink and you don't want pink okay so now we're going to take tomato red again around the same size dot and you're going to take a big brush and you're going to pick up red and you're going to paint that stripe. Now I'm being messier than you are. Not in my painting, but in my edges. So if you're on something that it doesn't go side to side, like my box, I, this you could do on the box. But if you're doing it on something that has edges and you want it to be straight, tape off the outside edges. 
so then you won't see that. Okay. So we'll come in. We'll give it some red. Okay. Now again, it's pretty transparent. Reds, yellows are usually transparent colors. If the blue has a lot of red, it's transparent. So you just add another coat. Okay. Let me quickly. I'm just going to do this so you can see. She'll come in. And you'll add another coat. Okay. Now again, remember, immediately pull the tape. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way, sorry. Nope. Okay. Forget that I did that on paper. We'll come up, and there you go. And that's because I'm on paper. Um, you have to be more careful when you tape on paper. And I'm pulling quickly. Okay, now remember, I didn't seal here. So let's see if it bled. Maybe not. This paper does not do well with tape. Okay. Good demo. So, if you see, I sealed here. See how I have nice stripes? But I did not, I'm gonna turn it upside down so you could see it. I did not seal here. I left this on purpose. So you see how it bled under? And that's because I didn't seal it. So that's why you seal it. Now if you don't, and you forget, and you have this here, so you'll take your brush with the light buttermilk and very carefully, you'll come in and you'll just touch it up. So the same thing, where this rips, I would do the same thing. Okay, I'm not a big fan of taping on paper, but you can. And if you tape on paper, do one of two things. Take your blue tape, and I'll do it on my sleeve so you can see. Put it on your sleeve, take it up, and then put it on the paper so then it's not as sticky, or use clear scotch tape. Okay, so now you'll see if I can get it up. Maybe not. There we go. Still a little sticky. But that's the way to get it from being so sticky. Okay? So now, we'll get rid of that. We're all base coated. All right, so what I did is I base coated the whole thing light buttermilk. Then I taped off the field and painted it navy blue. I taped off the inside of the field now. Before we taped the outside of the field because I wanted the blue there. Okay, remember we did it that way. But then when I was doing the red stripes, I have to tape on the field, on top of the blue, both ways, there and here, because now we're protecting the field when we paint our red stripes. 
Then I came in and I painted the red stripes tomato red. Okay? And then I let it dry. Okay? So now we're going to make our field, our whole flag, look dimensional. Let me that. Now remember, when you're making something look dimensional, we use color to do that. So the dark color will make the item recede and the light will bring it towards us. So here, we did some dark down here. You can see on the bottom of each um, stripe. So what that does is it makes it look dimensional. We're gonna float and we're gonna dry brush and we're gonna take this stripe and make it look like this. So it goes from flat to dimensional just with your colors. Okay, so we're gonna take some Payne's Gray and we're going to float. Now, to float, I'm gonna take this out so it's not in the way to float. There is four steps to floating. Wet, blot, load, blend. Remember that. Wet, blot, load, blend. Four steps. We're going to wet our whole brush. You'll see the shine on the bristles. Here's your brush. Here's your bristles. Here's your ferrule. Here's your handle. We're going to wet we're going to lay our bristles flat. We're gonna watch the shine dissipate from the chisel edge of the brush, which is the end, to the ferrule. As soon as it hits the ferrule, lift. Wet, blot, okay? There will still be some moisture in your brush, but there won't be too much, okay? And I'll go through this a couple of times. You're gonna load. When you load, load as close to the puddle as you can. Try not to be on an angle like this. And you just want a little bit on your brush. Do you see how I'm just a little bit across my brush? You'll take a piece of scrap paper and you'll blend. When you blend, you're gonna blend perfectly flat. Little strokes until you have a graduation of color. So I went from here to here. Now, a couple of things as we, before we go. If you blend like this, you see how now I have this skipping of color? That's because I pulled too much moisture out of my brush. So when I get to my surface and I try to float, this is what I'm gonna get, okay? If I have too much water in my brush, uh, let me see if I can give you a better example. You see how the paint pulls across? So you'll get what's called a halo, and you'll have this halo on your piece. It takes a little bit of practice. You have to practice all four techniques. Wet, blot, load, blend. And what that'll do is that will give you your float. If when you're doing this, and I say this to everybody, Say it while you're doing it until it becomes a habit. Wet, blot, load, blend. Wet, blot, load, blend. That will help you from not skipping a step. So you wet, you blot until the shine hits the ferrule. You corner load a little bit. And you blend in small strokes walking away from the puddle, okay? will come in and this is not going to be as noticeable until we dry brush and we're going to lay our brush perfectly flat and float and can you see that you'll see it better on the red now <coughs> excuse me the reason we do this is to help push the edges down okay now, what you're going to do is you float. 
you can't, we're going to float here too, but you can't come in and float while this is still wet. So this has got to dry, or what's going to happen is when I'm here, I'm going to pull this right off. So I leave my, I'll walk away from that area right there. And this float is Payne's Gray. Sorry about that. This float is, float is Payne's Gray. I walk away from that while that's drying so that I can keep working. I'm going to take some antique maroon and I'm going to do the same technique. Wet, lot, corner load, blend, I'm going to float the bottom of each stripe. Now, the paint, you want the paint to go where you want to push down. So now you see how I'm pulling that across? And I have a nice smooth float. Now if I get it where I don't want it, just take the clean end of the brush and just come in and pull it off. I am not doing this. And I'll show you. I'm not doing this. See the difference between nice and smooth and choppy? Here, you can see exactly where I picked up. I picked up, I picked up, I picked up, I picked up. You want to keep all the bristles on all the surface all the time. See that float? Oops. Now, and I'll show you on the next stripe. Okay? So I wet, blot, load, blend, and then I keep my brush on where the area that I'm pushing down. So that's how you know where the paint area goes. Now, I'm sorry, putting my piece, my brush here. See the pressure I'm putting? My brush is all the way down to the ferrule. Sorry, it's just a little bit harder holding it. Okay. Now, you have a mop, if you need one. A mop, you just use up and down. Don't pull your paint like this. You don't want paint all over. That just softens your floats. If you need it, use it. I often use it. If I run out of paint, I'm gonna come and start at some point where I've already floated. Now, I go all the way across, I can go back from the other side. But what I'm not gonna do is go halfway and then start again, because then you'll have that line there, which you don't want, okay? Wet, blot, corner load, blend, and you'll come in and put it flat. And you'll float. Now, I don't have enough paint. It's drying very quickly. Often you can get from one side to the other. But sometimes it's the temperature in the room. Sometimes it's um, the temperature outside. See that? So I'm taking my piece and I'm slowly building up the dimension. And then I'll come across here. Now I can do these stripes because I don't have anything that's wet. Okay? So now remember, we only got to do here. So we'll go back and we'll float. Wet, blot, corner load in Payne's Gray and blend. And now I'm gonna lay my brush up against the edge, the paint edge of the brush. And I'm gonna float right up the edge of the field. So 
So, floating took me from this flat to this. And that's just that technique, wet, blot, load, blend. I went from flat to dimensional. So with that, remember, dark makes the item recede, light brings the item towards us. So what we wanna do is we now wanna pop it a bit. So I'm gonna dry brush. Now I use stencils to dry brush. I find stencil brushes are easier to dry brush with. A dry brush, which looks like this, has a domed edge. It's better for some things, cheeks and, um, you know, when you're doing little parts of things. But right now, it's much easier to use the stencil brush. Stencil brushes, dry brushes are used dry. You can wash them when you're done with them, but you use them dry. So we're gonna come in and I'm gonna do the stripes first because they're dry. Neon. Neon, fiery red. I love neons because they adapt to the color you're using. So, ready for this? That's neon. That's the neon fiery red. It's like a really neon pink. But what happens is, when you, okay, when you put it on, it's gonna to adapt to your red. So I'm going to pick up paint. I pick up quite a bit. I load it on the whole brush. I'm going to take a piece of scrap paper and I'm going to scrub it off. Dry brushes, stencil brushes, you can scrub the heck out of and they're fine. Less is better. If you go in and you dry brush and you have this much on your brush, that's what you're going to get on your stripe. You don't want that. So scrub it off until there's almost nothing. And you're going to come in side to side and I'm just gonna slowly put that color in. See that? Now I took a flat stripe and made it dimensional. I'll come in and I'll do it on all the stripes. Slowly build up your color. It doesn't have to be a one, two, three thing. Run out of paint, pick up more. Okay, and you see how I'm popping that? I'm just back and forth. There's a decent amount of pressure on my brush. I'm not doing a little bit. I'm doing a decent amount of pressure. I'm not touching the white stripes. Okay, now you see, let me just show you this color. We went from that color and it adapted right to the red. You can't see that color on there, okay? So it brightened it, but it didn't turn it pink. So neons are very good for that. And if I'm not bright enough, I'll just come in and do some more. Now, you can take hand sanitizer and clean out this brush and use it again so that you're not making it wet, or you can just use a different one but don't pick up the next color on here because whatever you use, in this case, we're gonna use blue, the pink will turn it purple, okay? So we're just gonna bump to another brush. So I'm gonna pick up Aqua Sky. pick up open water. Let's pick up open water. Open water is not a bright blue. See that? So when we change our values, 
we're going to go from dark to medium. We're going to, again, pick it up on the brush. And I'm going to scrub it off. Now, I just use paper that's come out of my printer that kids have colored on. So you can use anything you want. Make sure there's just a little bit of paint on there. And we're gonna come in, and I'm just in little circles. And I'm building it up slowly. So you see what I'm doing? I don't wanna have a real big value change. I'm nice and slow. I'm not doing the whole thing because I want the edges to be dark. So what happens is the center looks lighter and the edges look darker. So now the center is coming up, the edges are coming down and it gives us more dimension. Okay, see that? So now we'll come in and we'll grab our pattern and we'll again lay our pattern down Take our graphite again, shiny side down, unfold it in half, and unfold. Shiny side down, take anything that applies pressure, we're going to just put in a firecracker. See our firecrackers? Okay, so both of my firecrackers are painted the same color. I painted them Williamsburg blue. So now I'm gonna bump to a little bit smaller brush. And when you're floating, you're always using a 12 or 14 flat. I use a 14. Never go smaller. You don't want a smaller brush. So I'm going to bump to this, to a little bit of a smaller brush. I'm going to move to a 10. And I'm still using a flat brush. Okay. And I'm going to come in. I'm going to base coat. And you see how I'm pulling nice, thin strokes. It'll take me two coats. Nice, thin coats. That's firecracker number one. I'll come in. Now if you're more comfortable taping them off, you can. I don't I don't worry about them too much. And I'll come here. Now, when I did that, I think that's too high. I'm gonna leave that on purpose so that I can show you how it's just gonna erase. Okay, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna do some quick firecrackers. Now, the trick to getting straighter lines is if you notice, I'm not sitting here and pulling my brush like this. I'm pulling my whole hand. So what happens is, it's like using a pencil. Think of it that way. Mm, that's not too straight, is it? So come in. And we'll just straighten that out. Okay, I'm using the whole brush and I'm using my hand. My hand is pulling. Now I can see this is pretty dry because it's not so shiny. It says it's warm where I'm painting. Okay, so the temperature in here is 
drawing it. You see those? I'll dry those quickly. Oh, comes around. Okay. So we'll do a quick coat. We'll do the blue first. And the blue underneath the red. So on this firecracker, this one is red. If I put the blue under it, because red is very transparent, the blue will help with the transparency. So I'll paint them both blue, and then I'll do red over it. Come on. Now I can still see, can you see areas? See that area right there? There's a shine right there. So that's the area that I'm gonna concentrate on. Now you can do one of two things before you put your red in. You can eyeball it. I'll show you how to transfer it back in, which is the good thing about being on tracing paper. It's still a little bit wet. So you can eyeball it, draw it in. You can take your pattern and just line it right back up. Take your graphite, slide it under, and transfer it back on. As a matter of fact, I'll do it that way. So, or you could do it that way. Or you can just take a pencil. I just use watercolor pencils. And I'm just going here. I'll go back to my ruler so that I have a straight candle. Now let me tell you something about a quilting ruler. I love quilting rulers. Okay? So I just drew that in. When you use a quilting ruler, which is a real good little lesson, you have all these lines on there. Mine's not too clean. If you line it up, on the side or anywhere. You see how I'm perfectly lined up? You'll get a perfectly straight line across. So if you're like this and your line here is not lining up, it won't be straight. You can do it any which way. This is a half an inch, this long line. This is an inch, an inch and a half, and two inches. So if I need a two inch line, I just do this, okay? So that's a good thing to, a good little tool to have. So I'm gonna take my Rookwood, Rookwood Red. I'm just gonna do a quick, now watch how nice it covers. See how nice that covers? Because I have the blue underneath it. And I'm just gonna do a nice coat and I'm here. Again, no lumps. I'm pulling nice thin coats. That's better. Let's quickly dry it. Now, see how I got some there? I accidentally, sorry, I accidentally drip some. Take a damp Q-tip, just a regular Q-tip from the dollar store, and just take it right off. Now, people say, Linda, why don't you just get regular Q-tips? Tell you why. Because regular Q-tips have a lot of cotton on them. Q-tips from the dollar store, and the only thing they're good for is painting but they're really good for painting because you don't have a lot of cotton on them. Let me just put another quick coat. Nice. 
these thin coats. See that? Quick dry. Okay, so now we're going to shade. Now remember, dark makes the item recede and light brings it towards us. So what we want to do is because this is not a full firecracker, the blue one, you can see that it's behind the red one. So I have to shade here where I want it to go down and I have to shade here to push it behind the red one. There's a top edge, a cut edge. You're going to shade under it and the back of it. So the back is going down and this is coming down. So when here you see the top, the top is now closer to us. Okay. Same thing here. We're going to shade the sides so that the left side is going down, the right side is going down. We'll dry brush the center and bring that up. So now it's not flat, it's rounded. Okay? So we're going to take navy. I'm going to go back to the navy, which I already have on my palette. I'm going to float wet, lot, corner load, blunt. Okay. Where I want to push down is where I'm going to float. So I want to push this edge down. I want to push the candle behind the red candle. I want to come and push that behind. Now, before we had to wait for it to dry because we were going to pull it off. But here, we don't have to wait. Let's soften that a little bit. Because, look, when I'm here, I'm not touching that. If I had a wider brush, then I couldn't float both sides. But I don't, so I don't have to worry about that. So I'm here, and I'm gonna float up this side. Now before I do, my edges, my top edge. I'm gonna clean this up. Now, if I get that there, and it's messy, just come in with a wet Q-tip. Just take it off. You're not gonna take this paint. You can scrub it pretty hard. You're not gonna take that off. I'm gonna come in, and I'm gonna use some black plum. Oops. I'm going to do the same thing on the red one. So remember, we want the sides to go down. Same brush, same technique. Wet, blot, load, blend. I'm going to come up the edge. I'm going to flip it around. Wet, lot, load, blend. And I'm going to come and I'm going to do this edge. So now suddenly I've gone from flat to rounded. I'm going to come in. Let me give it a quick dry. I don't know. Some of the stuff is drying quick and some is not. Now 
Now remember, we want to push down. So we're going to take the back edge, we're going to float right along the back edge. The paint is towards the back edge and we're going to float underneath the cut edge, well, the top edge, so that it now looks like it's dimensional. See that? We'll do the same thing with the little one. Okay, wet, blot, load, blend. Here. And I'm here. Now, when I lay my brush flat and I give it some pressure, I've got a graduation of color. And that's what I'm looking for. You see that graduation? I don't have, if you take your brush and you lift it like this, so I'm on the side, look, I have no graduation of color. Here, perfectly flat, all the bristles, I've got a graduation of color. You see that difference? That's important. Now, we want to pop it. So we want to take some bright salmon in the red, and we want to take some aqua sky in the blue. And we're going to dry brush. Okay. I'll take. I'm going to use a stencil brush. Oh, my blue is dry, so I'm going to pick it up again. Load the whole brush. Let's go rub it off. If you make yourself little notes so that when you're doing things, You'll remember wet, blot, load, blend. You'll remember to scrub. I'm gonna scrub a little bit in the center there. A little more. And I'm gonna scrub right down the center. And that'll give me my light in the center. Okay? I'm gonna take a different brush. You know what? I'll do this one with a dry brush so you can see the difference. I'm going to take my dry brush. I'm going to pick up some pink. I'm going to pull some off. And I'm lightly, this is lighter. I'm just going to do a light dry brush. And I'll just, can you see what I'm doing? Okay. So, you can get the same effect. The stencil brush, I find it just a little bit easier, but you can get the same effect. So now, you're gonna take a stencil. I have a star stencil. My star stencil has all different size stars. So you can kind of do any design you want. They can be curls. If you don't have a stencil, use a liner and paint something. I'll show you how to paint a quick store. So I'm gonna load my stencil brush in light buttermilk and I'm gonna lay a big star here and I'm going to clockwise and counterclockwise, counterclockwise and clockwise. I'm gonna lift and I have that. I'm gonna put some small stars here. And I'm just moving and I don't have them in the cut edge. I'm gonna put a little one down here. I'll put some up here. And I'm just, see what I'm doing? I'm just coming in. Now, I have not reloaded my brush at all. I have plenty of paint in here. And I gave it some design. Now, on this particular 
stencil, I used this size star. You can use this size star, you can use this. You can have just one big star. It doesn't matter, it's what you like, okay? So, then I came in and I took a liner, which a liner is a very, very thin brush, very little bristles. See that? I'm gonna take some lamp black paint and I'm gonna paint the wick. This is just a stroke. And I'm gonna come, and I'm gonna give it a little bit of curve. I'm gonna to go here, and it goes all the way to the edge. Now I'm putting more pressure because I want it to be a little thicker because it's the wick. Okay. Then I'm gonna take some extreme sheen gold. It is metallic gold, but it's a, a very opaque metallic. So you don't need a second coat. You can use dazzling metallics. Dazzling metallics are a little bit thinner. It'll take you an extra coat. You're gonna do some strokes to create the flame here. So what I do, and I'll show you here first, I'm gonna load the brush. I'm heavy. See how much paint I have on that brush? I'm gonna put some pressure and lift. Pressure and lift. So that I have a heavy stroke here and I come up to give it a little tiny tail. See that? But in this stroke, the liner has a lot of paint. Pressure and lift. Pressure and lift. As I'm pulling, I'm lifting right away. Okay? So I'm gonna kind of go around to give it a flame. They're all gonna meet here. Pressure and lift. Pressure and lift. Now don't make a pinwheel. Don't keep going all in the same direction. From here, here. And I'm not going perfectly around. I'm kinda just doing my thing. Now, you will find it easier to move your piece as you're going because your hand won't feel so comfortable. And I just add some extra strokes so it looks a little bit more natural. And pressure and lift. Pressure and lift. Now look, I changed directions. Because if you go all the way around a circle in the same direction, you'll have a nice little pinwheel going on. Same thing when you do a daisy. Always go in directions. Okay. Come in. And that's our patriotic piece for this month. So, quick recap. What we did is we painted the whole thing white buttermilk. We taped off the field, painted the field navy blue. Taped off the stripes, painted the red stripes tomato red. Shaded, floated, left, wet, blot, load, blend. Payne's gray to push down the sides and give it some mention antique maroon at the bottom of each stripe. We dry brushed, I used a stencil brush, neon fiery red in the center of the red stripes and open water in the center of the field. Then I transferred on my firecrackers. Oh, this is not dry, I'm gonna show you something. I transferred on my firecrackers to create the dimension which I wanted, again, to make it rounded. 
I shaded the left and the right side with navy blue and the left and the right side with black plum. I let it dry. I shaded the top to push that down and under here once it was dry. Then I dry brushed Aqua Sky in the center of the blue, the center of the top, and Bright Salmon on the red firecracker. I took a liner. I, oh, I stenciled my stars. I used a stencil brush and light buttermilk and I stenciled stars. I took a liner and I stroked my wick. And then I came in with Extreme Sheen 24 karat gold and I pulled my strokes around for kind of an explosion flame thing. Now, you would wait till this dries. But remember I said that I left a bit of graphite there and I left it so she could see. So now I'll just come in and I'll take my eraser and I'll just erase it, okay? Make sure this is dry because if you come in and you hit it, you're gonna pull the gold everywhere. But then a Q-tip will take that off, okay? So that's our patriotic product project. I hope that you had so much fun and I hope you enjoy painting it. And have a good night.